On the outskirts of Blackfoot, down Cromwell Lane, is a small cemetery that's been forgotten, like most of those laid to rest here. Most people didn't even know there was a cemetery here. This is the State Hospital South Cemetery, and nearly 1,000 men, women, and children are buried here. It's right next to the state-owned psychiatric facility, which has been around for over 130 years. Back when the hospital first opened in 1887, it was called the Idaho Insane Asylum. Family members could even just come and drop a family member off and say they have a mental illness and drive away and the state would take care of them. Many of those people died in the hospital with no one to claim them, so their bodies were put here. John Campbell was the first person buried in the cemetery. It was 1890, the same year Idaho became a state. Then came Mary Leesman, and later Loyal Gosselin. We don't know when John, Mary, or Loyal were born, or anything about them. Family had basically walked away and didn't want anything to do with them. And many people, we don't even have a full name. We don't have a date of birth. For years, psychiatric patients were buried here without any sort of funeral or formal services. This place basically became an afterthought, overgrown with grass and weeds. But in 2008, Tracy Sessions was appointed hospital administrator of State Hospital South, and everything changed. She was very passionate about working with the mentally ill. Dina Soreas worked with Tracy and says the administrator made the cemetery one of her key priorities. But with no budget, she had to come up with a way to pay for improvements. So fundraising projects began in 2012. She wanted this to be a beautiful place for people to come and visit. And she also wanted to have that respect for the ones that are buried here. She was just passionate about helping people that have a mental illness. Jim Sessions is Tracy's husband. And she just thought they needed to be honored. He gets emotional talking about her because last year at age 64, his wife of 30 years died of pancreatic cancer. She had spent thousands of hours and thousands of donated dollars changing this entire plot of land from a patch of grass to a place of beauty. She decided she wanted to get headstones for every grave. When Tracy started her project, 996 people were buried here and only 15 graves had headstones. Now, eight years later, she raised enough money to purchase a stone for every one and have benches installed. But when Tracy died, Jim made sure her project for the dead stayed very much alive. There was so much that still she wanted to do here that she hadn't had time to do. Then I just decided to carry it on. Jim, Dina, and dozens of volunteers have planted 22 trees, and the focus is now in getting all of the headstones set in concrete. 111 have been done. There's around 900 left to go. As we're cleaning off the plots or doing the concrete, you always wonder what their life was like. Patients are still buried here, although the state now has them cremated. The latest, a man and a woman, were laid to rest in July. As for the future of the cemetery, Jim hopes to raise enough money to put in new fences, sidewalks, flower beds, and a memorial wall. The Tracy Sessions Memorial Fund has been established to pay for everything. Donations are gladly accepted, and even though she's gone, Tracy is not forgotten. Thanks to her and Jim, Dominic, John, Mary, baby girl Olson, and the hundreds of others buried here won't be either. I can only imagine that she is beyond beaming that he has continued this project. Your wife must be pretty proud. I hope so. In Blackfoot, Nate Eaton, eastidahonews.com.